explain how sigma and pi bonds are similar, and then how are they different? All right, so let's put the two next to each other. So we're gonna talk about similarities, and then we're gonna talk about differences. So similarities and differences. Okay, so first things first is that I didn't say these types of notation, I said the words for them, which is very important. Just know that this little symbol represents a sigma bond. We will be seeing that throughout this chapter. And this, you should be you see this in your math class, but that's a pi, so pi bonds. Okay, so similarities between sigma and pi bonds. Well, they're both bonds, right? And we only use sigma and pi bonds when we talk about covalent bonds. So these types of bonds are only located in covalent bonds, meaning that they're only going to be shown when you have nonmetals coming together. Now, another similarity is that since these are the actual types of orbitals that the, you know, the electrons are actually in, these come together to form an overlap from the elements. So for example, if I have a, actually, I don't like that yellow. Let's just say that I have two hydrogens coming together, right? And here's my one hydrogen and here's the nucleus. And then here is my other hydrogen and here's the nucleus, right? And for each hydrogen, you have one electron, right? So maybe I'll put the one electron here and the one electron over here. And as they come together and come closer, there's a type of overlap. Do you see how the blue kind of overlaps with the other one? That is representative of a bond, specifically the orbitals. Now for hydrogen, uh, this would be a sigma bond, but that's not here nor there, right? But there's a type of overlap and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about sigma or pi bonds, they both will have an overlap between two elements in their orbitals. And also an orbital, whether it's a sigma bond or a pi bond, right? You could only have a max of two electrons. So two electrons are shared in both the sigma and pi bond. If I just quickly draw the difference between a sigma bond versus a pi bond, I will draw the nucleus. Let's just pretend that these are two oxygens. It really doesn't matter. But pi bonds are kind of like dumbbells. So maybe I'll do two different colorings because these have kind of like direction. One is represented as a positive and the other side is represented as the negative. And the electron can only be in one of the two sides. So let's just pretend that I have my electron here and my electron here. And when these come together, do you see how they will overlap to get those two electrons, um, you know, to be shared, right? So even still here with the, with the pi bonds, these are pi and there's still some overlap here. So now let's talk about the differences. Well, the differences is where the overlap is. In a sigma bond, which is more simpler than a pi bond, the overlap is between the nuclei. Do you see how if I draw a line between nucleus to nucleus of one H versus the other H, it's right in that nuclear region, or they, they call it the intranuclear region. So the difference is, is that for a sigma bond, the overlap, the overlap is between nuclei, and for the pi bond, where do you think that overlap is? Yeah, well, here's the nuclei. It's above the nucleus. And technically, I could have put the two electrons down here, so it could have been below the nucleus as well. So for the sigma, it's between the nuclei. For the pi bond, they're either, 
the overlap is above or below. I'll just say or below the nuclei. And since the, um, the overlap is in between the nucleus, right up the hydrogen atoms, for example, here, just know that a sigma bond is way more strong, right? It's, it's stronger than a pi bond because you're not holding it at basically the center part of the atom. So another difference is that the sigma bond is much stronger because it's holding hands right in the middle of the body, basically. So it's a much stronger bond than a pi bond. And one last difference is that all covalent molecules, so it just has to be, you know, a metal and a nonmetal, but all covalent molecules have sigma bonds. That is a necessity. That's mandatory. No exceptions. But not always a pi bond. So that's the thing here. You always have to bind from nuclei to nuclei, that's the sigma bond, and bonding above or below the nucleus, that's optional. So that's another difference. And I think we covered them all. So here are all the similarities of the bonds, and here are all the differences, and I think we should be good to go. What do you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you're doing well out there. If you wouldn't mind, please hit that subscribe button. It just gets the word out there that this channel exists. Thank you so much, and I hope you're having a great day. Let's keep studying hard. Bye-bye.